Okay, we are writing linear equations. This is unit three, day 10 notes. Um, we are doing this day 10, 11, 12, so you will have a couple days for this practice. Um, it says write the equation in the line slope intercept form. So just as a reminder, I want you to remember that we have two forms of equations for linear. We have slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And we also have standard form, which is ax plus by equals c, okay? Um, so those are two things we know. This is slope intercept, so the two things we need are m, which is my what? I heard a whisper, slope. And what does b stand for? y-intercept, okay? Um, a reminder for standard form, M is the opposite of A over B, okay? Just as a reminder. So, we need to find what are those two things, how can we find those? Which axis is my Y axis? Up and down or side to side? Up and down, so my Y intercept is wherever it touches that axis, this is Y to the sky. Okay, so what is my Y intercept, what's my B? Mm-hmm. And my slope, well, between two points, I'll do my rise one, two, three. And I'll move left one, two. Well, left is negative. So it ends up just being negative three over two. Okay. So my final equation will be y equals m, which is my negative three over two, x. X is always touching your slope, minus two. Okay, now a couple things to remember about slope. Slope is your rise over run. Okay, up is positive, down is negative, right is positive, left is negative. Okay, another way to find slope though, what if you're not given a graph with points? Can you do y2 minus y1? change in y over x2 minus x1, change in x. You can. Okay, so knowing that, it says write the equation of the line in slope intercept form. So just a reminder, y equals mx plus b. Okay, and if it passes through the points negative 4, 5, and 6, 10. So what do we need to find? Can we find slope using this? Yes, so I'm going to label so I don't get confused x1, y1, x2, y2. So slope is y2 minus y1, so 10 minus 5, over x2 minus x1, so 6 minus negative 4. Well, what ends up happening when you have two subtraction symbols in the middle? It to positive? It's the same as plus, yes. So 10 minus 5 is 5, over 6 plus 4 is 10. So what? 1 over 2? Yes, that simplifies to 1 over 2. Okay, so we know slope. So if we plug in what we know, we now know y equals 1 half x plus b. Okay, we don't know b. It does not tell us our y-intercept. But what do we know? Points. We know points. Don't x and y represent points? So could we plug in one of the points to solve for b? Yeah, use what we know to find what we don't know. So does it matter which point? No. no. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. I'll pick the first one. I usually pick the one with smaller numbers just because then I'm not multiplying as much. I don't know. I just do. It doesn't matter, though. So this is my x and my y. So y is 5. So instead of y, I'm going to put 5 equals 1 half. And instead of x, I'm going to put negative 4 plus b. 
So I'm just using this point. Okay, so what is one half of negative four? And how do I get B by itself? Add two to both sides, and what does B end up equaling? So now I can use my B to plug in, and I get Y equals one half X plus seven. Any questions with that? No. Could you always plug in your points to double check your work? Yeah, you could use this other point. What's half of six plus seven? Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Didn't even have to write it down and we still checked our work. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Okay, it says write the equation of the line in standard form if given f of x where f of 8 equals 9 and f of 5 equals 2. Remember the equation for standard form is ax plus by equals c. So I want you to remember, this is just a fancy way of giving me a point. What's inside my parentheses? x or y? x and outside my parentheses is y. So this is giving me the point 8 comma 9 and 5 comma 2. Positive. Okay, so to find my slope, I'm going to label. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what does that equal? What's 2 minus 9? And 5 minus 8? Two negatives make say? Now, this time is in standard form. Remember we wrote this at the top just a second ago. A is the op, I mean sorry, not A. M is the opposite of A over B. What's the opposite of 7? And what's the op or what's the exact bottom? So I already know A and B. So when I plug that in, I get negative seven x plus three y equals c. I don't know c, but what do I know? An x and a y, a point, right? Okay, I know A and B. You're right, but I need to find c, and I know x and y for two different points. Does it matter which point I plug in? No. Okay. So we are going to plug in a point. Doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to plug in x here and y here. And I get negative 7 times 8 plus 3 times 9 equals c. And then y'all just do it in your calculator. I'll do it over here. So I got negative, oops, might help if I turn it on. Negative 7 times 8 plus 3 times 9, and what do I get? C equals negative 29. So now, I'm going to plug that in for my C, and I get negative 7x plus 3y equals negative 29. But what's the one rule about A? Does anybody remember? It cannot be negative. So knowing that, all you have to do is multiply the whole thing by negative 1. It doesn't change anything. And since we did it to both sides, it makes it still equal. And it just makes all of the signs turn opposite. Okay, because two negatives make, say, a negative and a positive make a negative. And then two negatives make, say, positive. Any questions with that? Okay, yeah. two lines are parallel if they have what? 
What makes lines parallel? Huh? It's something to do with the slope. The what? Same slope. They have to have the same slope, but they also have to have a different y-intercept. Because if they had the same y-intercept, it would just be the same line. And remember, parallel means they never touch. Okay. Now what about perpendicular? What does perpendicular even mean? Not undefined. What? They intercept, but they intercept at what type of angle? A perpendicular. Yes, but what? I was going with it. <laughs> what kind of angle do they make when they touch? A right angle. A right angle, a 90 degree angle. Okay, it makes a perfect angle. Okay, perfect intersection. Okay. So they have to have an opposite reciprocal slope. Opposite reciprocal slope. So as an example, if you forgot what that means, opposite is talking about positive versus negative, and reciprocal means flip. Okay. So for example, if I gave you the slope of 2, what would be the opposite reciprocal? Negative. Not negative 2, but negative for sure. Now, if this was a fraction and I flipped it, what would this be as a fraction? 2 over 1, and then flipping it would be 1 over 2. Because if I made this a fraction, it would be 2 over 1 and flipping it would be 1 over 2. Does that make sense? So the opposite reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half. So what would the opposite reciprocal of 1 third be? Negative 3 over 1, which is just negative 3. Now fraction, or slopes we like to leave as fractions, so writing it as negative 3 over 1 is perfect. Okay, any questions with the opposite reciprocal slopes? Okay, opposite, positive versus negative, and then flip the fraction. Okay, so let's look at example four. It says write the equation of the standard form passing through 6, 2, and parallel to this. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. And it says parallel, which means what? Same slope. So what is the slope in this equation? So I know that my slope is 4 over 5. And when I'm doing standard form, what does my slope tell me? When it's in standard form, what does slope tell me? Opposite of? Opposite of A over B. So what's the opposite of 4? And what's B? So I already know my A and my B. I still need to find C. Okay? So I'm going to plug in what I know. I know A is negative 4. I know B is 5. And I don't know C. What else do I know? It needs to go through this point. So this is X. And this is Y. So I'm going to do negative 4 times 6 plus 5 times 2, and whatever that is is going to be my C. So that gives me negative 14. So C is negative 14, and I know that that gives me negative 4X plus 5Y equals negative 14. What's the last problem? A is negative, so I'm going to make everything opposite 
by multiplying, and that gives me 4x minus 5y equals positive 14. Any questions with that? Did somebody ask a question? Because A is not allowed to be negative in standard form. Yeah. Okay. So it says write the equation of the line in standard form. So again, standard form, ax plus by equals c. Passing through the uh, 3, negative 5, and perpendicular to 8x plus y equals 6. So what's the first thing we need to do here? Uh, get y by itself. You could, but you don't have to. Not the cover up method. We don't want to know the intercepts. We want to know the slope. Okay, so we could technically solve for y, or could we just do opposite of a over b? So I know my slope here is opposite of a, negative 8 over b, which is 1, so it's negative 8. Okay, and I know that I'm looking for perpendicular. What is the opposite reciprocal of this? Positive or negative? Positive 1 over 8. Okay, so knowing that, what is A? Negative 1, what's B? 8, and we don't know C. But we know the point, so we're going to fill in what we know. Negative 1 x plus 8y equals c, and I'm going to plug in this point. Okay, so I get negative 1 times 3 plus 8 times negative 5 equals c. When I type that in my calculator, negative 1 times 3 plus 8 times negative 5, I get negative 43. Yes. How did, you, how did you get that negative 1 for A? Because we found the slope of the equation it told us it's perpendicular to. So the slope of that equation was negative 8. Okay, and we had to find the opposite reciprocal. So it was negative, now it's positive. And then we had to flip it. And this is technically negative 8 over 1, so it became positive 1 over 8. And remember, A is opposite of, um, opposite of A. So it was 1, now it's negative 1. Yeah, you're welcome. So now we have our final equation almost. So we have 1, negative 1x one plus 8y equals negative 43. But what's wrong with it? So we're going to multiply everything by negative 1, and I get positive x. Do I have to put the 1 in front? No. no. Minus 8y equals 43. Now, if you put the 1 in front, is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it says write the equation in slope-intercept form given the x-intercept is 7 and the y-intercept is 5. So right away, it tells me slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And what does it tell me right away? What do I know already from my equation? What does m stand for? What does B stand for? Doesn't it tell me my y-intercept? Mm -hmm. So I know that B equals 5. But I still need to find M. Okay, intercepts, are those points? Yes. 
Yeah, so can I rewrite them as points? What's this as a point? My x-intercept. 7, 0. Because remember, x-intercepts are where y equals 0. y-intercepts are where x equals 0. So this is technically 0, 5. And I can do x1, y1, x2, y2. So 0 minus 5 over 7 minus 0, which gives me negative 5 over 7. So that's all I had to do. Okay, now these next two are special cases. Okay, and you might not notice that right away if I don't if I didn't put these arrows. So I'm going to show you what would happen if you didn't notice, but the nice thing is, is it kind of points it out to us. So um, I want you to realize that our y's are the same. And if we're drawing a linear line and the y's are the same, that means it's going to be the same height everywhere, okay, because linear lines are straight. So I should know that this is going to be a horizontal line, but if I don't, that's fine. We could have done our x, find our slope. So we would have done 1 minus 1 over 3 minus negative 5, and we would have gotten 0 over 8. Okay, if you type 0 divided by 8 in your calculator, what does it tell you? Huh? No. 0? It tells you 0. Okay, what does a 0 slope look like? So it's hoi, which means it's a y only equation, so y equals, what did y equal for both points? Okay, um, one thing I do want you to realize is what would be perpendicular to a horizontal line? A vertical line. So just know that if you have a y equals equation without an x, a hoi, then you are looking for a vertical undefined slope for the perpendicular line. Does that make sense? Okay, so then the next one says write the equation in standard form that passes through the points 4, 2, and 4, negative 5. So here I want you to notice what matches. X. X. And what does X equal? The range. Or four, sorry. Four. There's your answer. Okay. Now if you did not notice that right away, you would have done your negative 5 minus 2 over 4 minus 4 and you would have gotten negative 7 over 0. Now what happens if you type negative 7 over 0 in your calculator? No, it says error. And it's because it's an undefined slope, which should have led you to VUX, knowing that it's an x equals equation. Okay, so a little trick that I was taught when I was younger is it's okay to have 0 on top, it's not okay to have 0 on bottom. Okay, almost done. I know today's a lot. Almost done. Okay, um, if you have point slope form, this is if you're given just this point and just a slope, which technically we've done a bunch of those without this, so you don't technically have to use this, but you do have to understand the formula, okay? So that's why we're only doing three quick examples. Um, so I want you to realize you're given a point, I mean a slope and a point. So if you're given those two things, you can plug it in here and solve. If you like this method better, could you do this method over the other method we just learned? Yes. Okay, so knowing that, I want you to realize this is your x1, y1, and when we plug it in, we get y minus y1 equals my slope times x minus x1. Okay, to put this in slope-intercept form, you would need to get y by itself. What do I have next to my y? A minus 7. How do I get rid of minus 7? Okay, 
And what do I need to do to the right of this now? Just simplify, right? Okay, so what's two times x? Two times negative one. Negative two, bring down that plus seven. These are like terms and I get y equals two x plus five. So there's my slope intercept form, that's all it took. I didn't have to plug in my x, y, I didn't have to do any of that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what if I told you I wanted it in standard form though? Guess what? You would still have to find slope intercept. And then what's the only difference between slope intercept and standard form? X and Y are on the same side. So I need to move X over. How would I move that positive 2X? So I would get subtract 2X from both sides and I get negative 2X plus Y equals 5. And then what's the rule with standard? Yeah, multiply it by negative 1 and you get 2X minus Y equals negative 5. So that helped us put it in slope intercept and standard. Okay, we're only going to do actually one more example. So we're actually not going to do this example number three, but I am going to show you something before I let y'all do like practice. So again, one more. Here we have x1, y1. So we have y minus negative four equals negative three x minus y, uh, x1. What do we notice between y and four? What do two negatives become? Positive. Okay, so to get rid of that plus four, I'm gonna subtract four. And I get y equals, I'm gonna distribute negative three times x, negative three times negative two, bring down that minus four. Combine our two like terms. And I get this for slope intercept form. Now, what if I said I wanted standard form? Add 3x to both sides. The nice thing is it was negative, and when I move it over, what is it already? Positive. So, really, there's nothing left to do. You don't have to multiply by negative 1 because x is positive. Any questions from there? Okay, one more thing. I know we crossed this out, but I want to ask you something. If I gave you y minus six equals four x plus two, what's your slope? Four. And what's your point? Remember, the formula had the negatives. So this is my y. But what made this positive? A double negative, right? So my x is actually negative, too. So just be careful. When you pull a point out of point slope form, you're pulling the opposite. So if it says plus, you take out a negative. If it says minus, you take out a positive. So just remember, you're taking out opposite. Any questions, comments, concerns?